Hitler was a genius, but it was also evil. And the reason why I say that, it's going to be controversial, but I'm talking about people who are able to galvanize and make a whole country follow them based on their own ideology. You've got to have a sense of genius about you. Human beings are very interesting creatures, right? They're very intelligent, and a lot of them are quote unquote geniuses, right? And I feel like this thing called evil genius, or what I term evil genius, I'm sure it's, it's not my term, but I just call it evil genius, is like someone like Hitler. What Hitler did, he used his genius for evil. Slave masters, the same thing. It's genius to get a people who are, and many people, let's, let's just talk about, there are many people on your plantation who could easily take a cutlass or take a knife or take, and kill you. But the genius of your psychological um, warfare has these people scared of you. And there may be two, three, four of you to like, I don't know, 70 of these other slaves. So you've used your genius to psychologically damage a people to keep them, you know, subjugated. Human beings are intelligent. They are genius enough to create an atom bomb or a hydrogen bomb. It takes a lot of sitting down, planning, mathematics, all this kind of stuff. It's genius, bro. The way these people uh, map out this whole stuff. But they're using it for evil. You're genius enough to find all this information and then you use it for such evil. Do you know what I'm saying? To blow up how many thousands of people and it's just like that whole evil genius thread runs throughout all of humanity and it's just very interesting to me that people use their genius for such evil it's another thing with with the whole god concept right like i always contend that god was created by human beings but it's an evil genius idea do you know what i'm saying to tell people that there's this huge you know, or uh, entity, all-powerful entity that watches everything that you do and if you don't do the right thing then you're gonna burn in hell and it keeps human beings locked in a fearful place. Now, somebody has something to gain, for me, from keeping you in fear. Now, I've relinquished the fear, I'm, I'm not scared of that stuff anymore, but there's something to gain from somebody writing that stuff and keeping you in a box of fear to manipulate you because we can see that pastors manipulate people and bishops and um, the Catholic Church or imams or any kind of religious person can influence the people that follow the religion and believe in it and believe in this God. Even God himself, the character is an evil genius, like he created evil. Now they say God is, you know, a genius because he created the universe and the stars and whatnot, right? But he's also evil because he created evil. So he's a genius but also evil because he created the devil and it's like this whole evil genius like thread it just runs through humanity and i'm just thinking when are human beings going to use their genius for like good My number one fear is dying before my children. Everyone's got fears, bro. Like, I'm not a fear. I don't fear another person, but I fear situations. I fear a situation where I'm gonna leave my children because I think about their feelings. Do you know what I mean? Like, I think about how they'd feel uh, with me gone. So everyone's got fears. Like, I ain't a robot, bro. Um, but, like I said, I don't fear human beings. What's gonna happen is gonna happen. I just fear situations. I, f I fear for people, if that makes sense. I don't fear for myself. I fear for other people, if that makes sense. <laughs> The 
communication with my ancestors thing is um is really not that hard to grasp. And I feel like religious people have a hard time grasping it. Me communicating with my ancestors is the same as what they do. I feel like the reason that they, they find it so hard to grasp is because they've they've got like a one track mind and the only way you can communicate with something other than yourself is via prayer. So if I was to say to a Christian, do you communicate with God? They'd probably say, yeah, they'd be like, all right, I pray. Yeah, you pray, so that's communication. So Muslims will pray five times a day. They'll communicate five times a day with Allah. And in all three instances, whether it be me, whether it be the Christian, whether it be the Muslim, the thing that we're communicating with cannot be substantiated. It cannot be proven to be a fact. So I can't prove me communicating with my ancestors is a fact, and neither of them can prove that their God is a fact. The fact that they think that me communicating with my ancestors is very weird, it's funny to me because they are also communicating with an entity that they can't prove either. Because when you ask them for the proof of God, they can't provide it or they provide a book of claims, which is the Bible or which is the Quran. So I claim, I'm the claim here. I claim to communicate with my ancestors. You claim to communicate with God and you claim that this book is from God. It's frustrating to me that the comprehension skills of religious people is quite low. It's, it's, it's a shame. I said in another, uh, a, one of my debates years ago to a, a person that you're just as crazy as I am. If I say I communicate with an entity that I can't prove and you say you communicate with an entity that you can't prove, we're just as crazy as each other. And I'm okay with that. I'm okay with saying that it may look crazy to some people, but they're not willing to say, you know what, it may look crazy to some people also. Because it looks crazy to me you praying five times a day. It looks crazy to me you catching the Holy Ghost in church and going crazy. It looks crazy to me. And I ask you, what's that all about? And you say, well, I caught the Holy Ghost. And, you know, I was communicating with the Holy Ghost. And I'm like, really? Like, explain that to me. And they were like, you know what? It's a belief, it's faith, it's something that I feel. And I'm like, all right, cool. Same thing. It's faith, it's a belief, it's something that I feel also. Do you know what I'm saying? I'm searching for facts to give me wisdom. That's what I'm searching for. I'm not searching for people's opinions. I mean, opinions are cool, but I'm not necessarily searching for them. I'm searching for facts that are going to give me clarity and going to give me wisdom. That is what I'm searching for. If you ain't coming to me with something that is going to give me wisdom or give me clarity. You're entitled to your opinion, but that's not what I'm searching for. And everyone's searching for something. But to me, I'm willing to, to accept that what I think right now may not be what I think five years from now, 10 years from now. If you don't open yourself up other possibilities of what you think you know you just won't grow and what I found is religious people will not open themselves up to other possibilities of what they know which is why I feel in the future people who are religious will be left behind mm -hmm.